can see we got the exhaust manifolds mounted here on both sides uh, of the boat. I've got Volvo components. Um, you know, it's a 350 Chevy small block engine, 5.7 liter. We got the exhaust manifolds mounted. And now we need to put the risers on. Notice here we have all this clean. It's not just cleaning the paint, but it's getting it filed down or sanded off so that it's an even surface. Because when we put these uh, gaskets on, there's no uh, seal or anything between. It's just these gaskets and they get torqued down to 30 pounds um, of pressure. And so you don't want it to leak, of course, because you know you got water that comes through here, exhaust here. If you have a leak, you could blow the engine or get water ingestion. And we got too much money involved and too much time, as I said before. So tonight we're going to show you how to get the risers prepped, ready, and mounted on the engine. Okay, here's our new riser and our new bolts and gasket. You always want to use new bolts if you can on these projects. Um, see this right here, this flat surface area that has to go on top of my exhaust manifold. We got to do the same thing, either file it or sand it down, not just to remove the paint, but to get a flat surface so we'll get a good seal and a, and a, and a good connection between the exhaust manifold and the riser. All right, you can see here, I'm just scraping this off. I put a little brake cleaner on the um, riser using this uh, Max Napa brand, cheap brand, just anything to try to loosen up the paint a little bit. And then I'm gonna get the sanding block out and uh, try to get this all level. Got some Rhino wet uh, sandpaper red line. It's a, it's a better brand than what you get at the, um, just the local stores. I ordered it online, it's Rhino wet. You can wet sand also. Um, the Volvo book calls for 80 grit, but this is a good sandpaper. All I have is 100, but it's close enough. Get you a nice flat block so you can uh, keep a level surface, surface and then uh, go for it and get her sanded down. See, we got it all ready to roll. Nice and clean. Clean and remove the little towel outside. See all these particles? You need to suck that out with a vacuum shop back for before you put it on the boat. Okay, now that we got the uh, the manifold mounted, we're ready for the riser. The trick here is the same thing. You're gonna need two bolts for uh, studs to go in the holes diagonally. So we're gonna cut them off and uh, put them on to hold the gasket. That's the secret to that. So save your old bolts. Okay, while Clarence is making jokes, I'm over here sweating. It's 100 degrees here in Virginia. Now, I'm not talking about um, heat index. I'm talking about temperature. It's not 100 right now. It's supposed to be 100 tomorrow. It's been up in the high 90s. All right, we got the heads of the bolts cut off. Now we need to make a little groove in here for the uh, screwdriver slot to get it back out. Of course, you don't want to put them in tight. You just want to make a little groove here. I'm not as good as Clarence is cutting this groove. Well, here goes nothing. I got her now, I had to angle her down a little bit. Da -da. <laughs> okay, now we got the uh, the head cut off, the slop of the screwdriver. Need to clean these threads, they're a little rusty. Put the gasket now that we got our bolts. Notice here it says retorque riser bolts after initial startup while the engine is still warm. So you want to do that if it gets warm, no doubt it's going to get warm need to be retightened so we set the gasket down you notice it can move around a little bit so you want to make sure you get a good seal so hence therefore you got the bolts you need to put them in opposite corners so your seal will do its job the gasket just want to get them tight enough to hold it in place you don't need to just torque them down or nothing Now we're ready to set the riser on. Riser taking over to the boat. Clarence, I finally got him out of the chair. There's his chair. It is empty. And we're going to go over here and set this riser on. It's all clean. Got the bolt set up. All right, Clarence. Here goes nothing. You got the front. I got the back. You got the guy, the bolt on there. I can't, the weight of it is. He is already in. I know, but Laura, let me do the back one first then. Do the back one first. There we go. I thought maybe I messed up the head of the boat or something. This baby does weigh something. 
Does that look good on there, that thing? The, the seal, the gasket, there we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's setting on, she should just screw right down. We barely got these two bolts started. We need to take our two studs out and put the other bolts in. Get my handy dandy screwdriver here. Like I said, you don't have to tighten them way down or nothing. You got the other bolts, Clarence? Clarence is accusing me of taking a socket and a ratchet home, but I didn't <laughs> do it. That's why you holler when you get them sitting in there twice in there. Right? Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Okay. Always agree with the man that owns the shop. <laughs> okay, now we got a mountain. It's time for the handy dandy torque wrench. We got to take these bolts down to 30 pounds of pressure. And the manual says to start, you know, on the corners, work across from each other. And you don't want to go straight 30. I guess we need to go about what, Clarence? About 15, then go 30? Okay. Or 10, 20, and 30? 15. Okay. 20. Last pass to go 30 pounds. Right, you can see here that we got the exhaust manifold and the risers finally mounted. You see that we torqued them to 30 pounds of pressure. So we hope you might have learned something. If you do, uh, make a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll continue to try to work on this 1996 Albemarle uh, 24-foot uh, boat project.